Hello from London, and today I want to introduce you to three of my trusty companions in language learning. They've been with me along a long journey over many years. Like me, they're not the newest kids on the block. They're not the most technologically advanced or the flashiest. Meet my old trusty Welsh, Russian and German pocket dictionaries. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr Gareth Popkins. Here it's about language learning in all its elements. Reviews and vlogs from language learning events, looking at different materials, exploring methods, interviews with inspiring language learners and my own language learning projects. If you want to get my free webinar training to get off to a flying start with your own language learning, or if you're already a bit experienced to take it to the next level, well, you can follow the link underneath this video. Here are the three quick stories then, beginning with my Welsh dictionary. This is the oldest of the three. It's a Geiriadir Bach uh, from, um, I think it's the Christopher Davis, it's now Gwask Gomer, I think, who published this. It's a very old dictionary, it's been around for years, and my copy isn't so new either. Um, this one was actually originally published in, what, 1959, and I've got the 1987 edition. And it was probably a year or two after that that it was given to me, actually by a college friend, uh, for my 21st birthday. It's someone I've lost touch with now, actually, but that was when I just started to learn Welsh and word had started to get out in college that I got this weird new project of learning the language. Now, Geri Adir Bach, you can see my copy is particularly tatty, and it has an unusual feature to it, which um, is that somehow some of the, well, one section has been actually misbound. It's around here. I put a marker in so I can show you. When you get to the M's in the English half, uh, you get to page 296, and the next page is page 312, and the, from the start of the M's through to the ends, it runs backwards. It's very bizarre. So it goes from J to halfway through the ends, which is, is pretty frustrating. But I've stuck with this. Um, it was in many ways out of date when I got it, but it is small, it is portable. And there's a real issue around good Welsh dictionaries uh, and uh, which one you should use. And I think that's worth a video in its own right. But this is one I took off with me to Lampeta, Llambeder von Stefan, after I graduated, when I went for a summer to focus on learning Welsh. And it's one I've reached for ever since, along with other Welsh dictionaries that I have now in my Welsh learning. The second dictionary I acquired was my uh, Pocket Oxford Russian Dictionary. Uh, in this edition, no longer available, but you can see that's also looking particularly worn. The colouring has come off the back. I've had to use tape to repair the spine here, and it's sort of almost falling apart. Uh, this uh, was quite expensive for me. It was £6.95, which is still not that cheap, but was a lot more uh, when I bought it, probably, I would say, nearly 30 years ago. Um, but again, it's been uh, a book which I have used constantly. It went with me to Russia the first time I went there in 1990, and then uh, when I was living there for longer later on. Again, it's very, very worn. Now, a frustrating thing about this book was that it was not particularly modern when it came out. So I checked the dates of publication. Um, this was published in uh, 1975, going Russian-English. The English-Russian section dates from 1981. Uh, I think there were larger volumes going both ways, published separately by the Oxford University Press, which they, they, they then condensed down into this pocket version. And it didn't have, of course, the computer and internet terms, which were slowly coming in during the 1990s when I learned Russian. What I also found was that it didn't have a lot of technical terms in it, uh, such as parts of cars, which I was occasionally needing when I was living in Russia. Quite academic in, in approach. Um, it does have one or two phrases in it, but mainly it's again individual words, which is also a feature of the uh, Geria Dirbach. Uh, so uh, it wasn't as useful as it might have been, but it was at that time one of the few Russian dictionaries available. Now, there were different editions since then from Oxford University Press, so, uh, and I have some of them. Uh, so the shortcomings of this dictionary are really mainly, for you at least, just of historical interest. 
The third one, uh, the one that's uh, sort of in intensive care, is my German pocket dictionary, which I bought uh, when I was a postgraduate student, when I was starting to learn German in uh, 1990, 1991. This is from Harrop, and this is, as you can see, very, very worn and is falling apart, and <laughs> some of the pages are also, are also coming out. Uh, very, very yellowed, but in terms of uh, quality and modernity, this was probably the best of the three dictionaries in that it had the most up-to-date uh, vocabulary and it had a great many um, uh, phrases and examples and derived words in it. So um, this is one, again, that I still use an awful lot in my language learning. Since then, of course, uh, my collection has expanded and um, I now have many other uh, dictionaries for those languages and also for my other languages. With French, by the way, which was the first language I used, I didn't have a pocket dictionary. What I had, and I'll show you it now, was my large um, Harrop's French dictionary. And my dad actually bought this for me before I went off to university because I had to study texts in French as part of the end of the first term exams uh, for the Oxford History course. And so he went all out and bought me this, this huge French dictionary, which has been also a trusty companion over the years. Although, of course, now again is completely outdated in terms of the latest technological internet computer terms and so on. So those are the dictionaries that have been with me all the way, really, in my language learning. I'm still a fan of the paper pocket dictionary. Uh, I find that uh, uh, I'm maybe just a bit of a traditionalist, but I like also with my Basque now sort of marking the words that I have uh, used. So here's my Basque Morris dictionary. Uh, which I bought a few years ago, and as I come across new words, I just put a little pencil mark there to let me know that I've looked it up once, and I expect to have to look it up many times again. Now, it's hard for me really to justify why I prefer paper dictionaries. I suppose you can use the argument that you're less likely to get distracted, you're not reliant on your phone being charged, and so on. But it's not something I'm feeling that I need to sell or proselytise, but I just wonder what your view is. Do you like a small paper dictionary? Have you got one that's been with you that has a story attached to it? Let me know about that in the comments below. Similarly, if you are a fan of online dictionaries, which ones do you use and why? There are great ones you can, of course, download as self-contained apps. Um, does that make more sense? Is it time I sort of moved on? Let me know what you think. Share your thoughts in the comments below and hope to see you again soon here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for the vibe, throw me a thumbs up, tickle that bell and share the affair.